I'm an out, I'm an out and out Robin Williams fan. He is without a doubt one of the most original, original, most original creative uh, minds we have working today. He does. He can act straight. He can be crazy, uh, and he has a new movie out, in which he co-stars with Robert De Niro, called Awakenings, and it's gotten incredible reviews. Those of you who have seen it. He's been nominated for a Golden Globe and has already won Best Actor by the National Board of Review. Would you welcome Robin Williams? One of our more serious actors. Yes. <laughs> Olivier, yo. Yo. <laughs> Never become attached to a house. Never. <laughs> and the judge said, all the money. <laughs> you, and we'll just shorten it to alimony for the people at home. <laughs> Divorce from the old Latin word divorciara, meaning having your genitals torn out through your wallet. <laughs> Yeah. That's from the Latin. I didn't yeah. know that. That's a kiss your ass. That's goodbye. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Hello, Maestro. Yeah, I you, sir. Good sir. Oh. Is... Well, it's nice to see you doing that real simple uh, stuff again. Yeah, the, no, that real heavy drama show has kept yeah. you, you know, doing that Shakespeare stuff. You think about Shakespeare. You think about a man, basically with the education, second grade education, wrote some of the greatest poetry of all times. I think maybe not. I don't. Know. <laughs> Wandering around Stratford after a couple of beers, knocking on doors, going. <laughs> Is this to be or not to be? <laughs> right. oh, yeah. I wrote that. That's mine. That's mine. I'm William Shakespeare. Right. Kiss my tights. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever do any Shakespeare? You did, waiting, did. you did Waiting for Godot? I did Waiting for Godot. Yeah. I did Shakespeare. I've, it's exciting to wear tights and have people go, I can't see anything. <laughs> He's no nerdy, yes. Someone give him a dagger. <laughs> Thank you. There's a dagger I see in my hand. What is this I hold before me? <laughs> oh, yeah. what a rogue and peasant slave. Just the, Nothing. That's just the window about discontent. All right, let it breathe. <laughs> you right. ever picture different people playing Hamlet, say, to be or not to be, like Stallone? Oh, Stallone. Mel Gibson be. just did Hamlet. Pretty good, I hear. Oh, it was wonderful, it? I hear. It's yeah. like great to hear, right? But I mean, Stallone, I couldn't Stallone, see. you could feel like hey. to be or what, you know. <laughs> Schwarzenegger walks into the room. I'm back. Watch out, Denmark. <laughs> Mother, come here. I love you. Big kiss for you. Sorry, you're dead. <laughs> Look over here. I'm going to do another speech, but first, I'm going to tear through a wall and flex my nipples. <laughs> Don't be afraid of me. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah. Nicholson, you can think of him. Yeah, he'd be great. He'd be a great Hamlet, just like neither a borrower nor a lender be, <laughs> and the T-shirts keep for thine self. <laughs> These are obscure references, but we must. <laughs> we throw him in just to keep yeah, the audience. Shakespeare on said, "Was it not him that said, kill all the lawyers first? But of course, there were no agents then. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Ten percent. <laughs> my, my lord, must give up that check for not feeling this. Carpe per diem sees the check, and yet Neil Bush still works. Why? <laughs> I have a copy of the uh, letter that George Bush wrote to Saddam Hussein. Oh, yes. We were wondering where that was. You had it. Can you, can you reveal? Right. Without, now, without affecting national I security. I don't know why they found this offensive. It starts off, dear oil sucker. <laughs> I don't know. I'm... <laughs> and that, that man's name, Tarak Aziz. Doesn't it oh, think like a shove a little thing he's saying like we want peace and underneath it's like he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> it's Joe Asuzo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You want to think about the whole thing, though, you basically. You want to solve problems in the Middle East, you send John Gotti. He goes, Saddam, how you doing, babe? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the deal. You get out of Kuwait, I give you Jersey. Okay. <laughs> Bingo, he's out the next damn day. All of a sudden, wow, things start happening. Mingo, mingo, mingo. And I know that they've got quail locked up in some back room going, okay, let's go over it again, Okay. <laughs> Let's go over it one 
one time here, okay? Assad. You did. Okay, try it again. <laughs> Aziz, what did he say? No, try it again. Assad, you did. No, try it one more time. Who's saying? Nobody. Okay, try it again. <laughs> Gaddafi, God bless you. Not that. <laughs> I don't know. You have to kind of go, why, why is this? This is very strange. Poor quail. Remember, yeah. one, remember once when they said they were going to send him to Central America and three days later they found him wandering around Ohio? He's been on more cruises than a Jewish grandmother. <laughs> as soon as he comes home, he goes, I am back. Oh, okay. <laughs> send him out the door and he comes back with a little statue with a, you know. <laughs> yes. Remember Look that. what I found, Marilyn. Give me that. <laughs> Grind that down. <laughs> it's a little frightening. I'm going to ask you one serious question all tonight. Oh, one, one serious question? When you're doing the thing like you... You're, and you, first of all, you're a good actor. You're really a, a, a marvelous actor. But... <laughs> oh, shit. Sure. But... It's so nice. Well, bless you. I've been nominated twice. It's so nice to watch somebody else win. <laughs> and they read the name and they go, and the winner for best actor is someone other than you. <laughs> And you sit there and they keep the camera on and you and you're supposed, supposed to, go. to go like, I'm so happy. <laughs> it's, wouldn't it be nice you could be really truthful and go, ah, yeah! <laughs> Give it to me! But just to be among your peers is yeah. honor enough, sure. It is. Now the hey, you don't even have a green card! Give it to me! <laughs> I don't know, but... The no, no, what I was no, going to ask you... What I was going to ask you... Okay. <laughs> this has to do with what we're doing right now. Okay. You're a serious actor. You're, you're in a serious scene. I know how you work. Because your, your mind gets going in stream of consciousness, and you start firing. When you're in those scenes, you ever get to the point where all of a sudden, you're saying, hey, this is, there's no laughs here, and you want to veer off and go into yeah. the c comedy thing? There's sometimes. I mean, it was weird. In this movie, I was working with Robert De Niro, who yeah. was obviously whole other style. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, well, Bob is not a funny yeah. guy. I think Nostradamus said, when they meet, that will be the end. <laughs> I mean, he's a different style. Yeah, you know, it's like, is. how you doing, Bob? Okay. Uh. What? And it's, <laughs> you're afraid that if you look at him the wrong way, it's like, hey, Bob. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you have to kind of, you find a way of dealing with it, but there's sometimes where you have to break the mood because we're yeah. working in a mental hospital for five months Jeez. in Brooklyn, and every day you'd walk in, there'd be a little guy Staring, there'd be like, there's, you know, there's a lot of doors and yeah. only five keys. And <laughs> you'd be there and you'd walk past and there'd be a guy waiting at the window going, do I look nuts to you? Do I look nuts to you? Do I look crazy to you? And it, you realize it was one of the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beginning. So you're walking into this environment and you, we were working in this place. Yeah. And it was, it was, an, it was an, I guess, a hospital where the bottom two floors were still real patients. Yeah. And we used a lot of real patients. We used, you know, Penny was using schizophrenics and yeah. uh, uh, Tourette's patients. And it was a weird thing. The schizophrenics, she would ask, she would direct them. And everything was fine until the moment when they said, it's time now. We're going to have to, because someone's talking in front of you. We want you to talk but not say anything. And all of a sudden you saw them look like, and I'm crazy? Yeah. <laughs> but they, but they wanted background stuff. Yeah, but not it's like, you know. it was that moment where all of a sudden reality went, mm. Yeah. <laughs> But there are times when, no, you have to break up, but there's other times where you can't. Did you, yeah. ever meet, did you ever meet the doctor that you're playing in here? Oh, yeah, he's wonderful. Oliver Sacks, he wrote this book, Awakenings, and he wrote another book called The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, which those of you who drink a lot are going, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, I right, and she was a pair of shorts one night, too. <laughs> and he wrote these wonderful books, basically about different aspects of the brain. And in this, he, um, he was there every day. Yeah. He's an amazing man. He's about 6'4". He's like a combination of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Albert Schweitzer. And he also looks like Santa Claus because he's got this big beard and uh, usually there's food in it that he's forgotten is there. <laughs> oh, oh, good. I forgot that. Mm. <laughs> Tasty. 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 Mm. And he's this very... The amazing thing, as big as he is and as strong as he is, he's this very gentle and compassionate man who is brilliant, who is... He examines... He called these people who basically have been in a comatose state for 30 years and... Many of us are going, well, that's Ronald Reagan, but no, I, I think that's, it's, he's wrote about them from the point of view of that basically they're explorers. He said that they came from this, they're in another state, they're exploring right. another dimension of thought. And of course, in the play, you played the doctor who was aware that there are people inside there and then just in, over a period of time start to come out of there. Yeah, home, right? they, through this, he, he basically isolated that they suffered from this one disorder called encephalitis lethargica, which is, encephalitis is a brain virus, and this right. is a specific one that after the initial outbreak, which went through Europe and America and killed many people, but many people who survived, 
it had a dormancy period, and about five years later, they all of a sudden would start to freeze up and go into this like statue state. It would be latent that long, and then yeah, and you have a dormancy period, and then it would come back, and then he woke them up basically with this drug that they use for Parkinson's patients, right. which is it was a miracle. And he yeah. said for that summer, it was an amazing thing to yeah. see them. He has documented footage of these people who hadn't moved right. in a long time, but and the next thing you see them, they're, they're like this. I'm out of here. <laughs> You think that after 30 years, one of them would wake up and go, didn't anybody try and shake me? <laughs> I was sleeping. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're going to show you a film clip later. Stay, stay where you are. We're coming back with Robert. And <laughs>